Now let's talk about adding even functions. So what is the significance of this lecture in our discussion of reflections and transformations? Now adding even functions are still one of the major characteristics of functions. We could say that an, a, a, a certain function is odd or a certain function is even by investigating somewhat about, about the properties of the x. Literally, the x that is in the function y or f of x. So the key questions that, that we are going to answer here are, number one, what is an odd function? Number two, what is an even function? Number three, how do we distinguish whether a function is odd or whether it is even? Number four, how can we describe or how can we differentiate an odd from an even function? And number five, what if the function is, is, is neither falling into the categories of an even function? So what is it called? To start this discussion, we basically have to single out the add and even functions discussion. So in, in this lecture, we are given even functions. So what are even functions? Let us investigate from the given function f of x here. The given function is equal to negative x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 1. And from the word even, there is an even word here, which gives you sometimes or somehow of an idea about what, what an even function is. So let us investigate the details of the f of x. You can notice that our x is here. We have our first x at the beginning. We have our second x at the beginning. And we have an x here at the end. Now let us look at the end. What is the x here? Our x here is raised to zero. Why? It is proven in mathematics that anything, any number, any letter raised to zero is equal to one. So therefore, that makes our assumption as valid where x raised to zero is present in this, in this uh, third term here. So we have an x raised to zero here. And it is also has been stated in, in definitions that zero is either positive or negative. And when we include zero in our intervals, you could see some, some in, uh, expressions such as this one, x is greater than or equal to zero. And this means that it is non-negative. And you could see some expressions wherein x is less than or equal to zero also. So this means that it's non-positive. So from these definitions, we could say that zero is either positive or negative. So it could be used for both a positive or negative or positive or negative exponents. Therefore, what is the relationship of, of, of those things here? We have our first x with an exponent of 4, which is even. And we have our second x here with 2, which is even. And there is an argument for our 0 here. So as I have said, it's either positive or negative. So we have no problem with that. So tell you a property of our 0, our, our 0 is still in the line of even numbers, am I correct? So 0 is even. It's an even number, right? So therefore, we could see some even exponents here, 4, 2, and 0. 
so we we have an idea now our idea is getting stronger wherein we have three even exponents here defining an even function therefore for every x replace with a negative x here let's investigate okay if our x is replaced with negative x what do you think will happen with the original equation this will have negative x raised to 4 plus 5 negative x raised to 2 minus 1 now let's uh, never mind the x raised to 0 now because anyway it's still 1 so we will have uh, f of negative x will be equal to negative x to the fourth plus 5x square minus 1 because all letters or all numbers which are negative and which are raised to an even exponent becomes positive and it is unchanged. So as you can see here, our f of negative x is still equal to our f of x. So we conclude that our when our f of x, so this gives us a conclusion that when f of x is equal to f of negative x, then our function is even. The function is even. Okay? Okay. So this is very important. What do you have to do to check whether a function or a given function is even? First look at the exponents. From the exponents alone, you could you could have a strong idea that it could be an even number by just looking at the exponents. So if the exponents if if most of the exponents are even, then you have a positive idea that it could be an even function. So you, you are going to test it by replacing x from the original function with negative x. And when you do that, and when your answer remains uh, to be the same as the original f of x, then you are now sure that that function is an even function. Understood? So since we already defined or we already tested this f of x here as an even function, this is already even, then what now are the properties of even functions? Okay, this is like a logical way or the, uh, what do you call this? The, the way that I did a while, a, a while ago in the presentation, so we basically substitute negative x with all the x's in the f of x. And then the negative number raised to an even power, which is being illustrated on the, on, on this line, okay? It still gives you uh, a positive value for the, the negative raised to an even number. So therefore, our f of negative x is still equal to f of x. And this gives us this uh, conclusion here. The definition of an even function. The function f is an even function if and only if f of negative x is equal to f of x for all x in the domain. So that is the conclusion for the definition of even function. So therefore, let us investigate our even function, our given even function, in terms of graph. So our function f of x is equal to negative x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 1 has the following graph on the center. So as you can see, we have figure 1 dash 6e and this illustrates the graph of the given function f of x 
Therefore, we could uh, easily point out that uh, the di different properties of the event function. So let's begin with investigating our symmetry. Okay, this is our y-axis. Okay, and uh, it seems that the graph have uh, or has a symmetry on the y-axis. If it's f of x, then for f of negative x, the value of all the all the uh, the values of uh, all f of negative x taken will still be the same with with the original f of x. So this will give us the same pattern or the same graph. So whatever you do to this function, it will still have the same figure. Whether you invert it or you flip it across the y-axis, it will still be the same. So the symmetry lies on the y-axis. Symmetry will lie on the y-axis or across the y-axis. So that is an even function. Whatever you do with the graph, the f of negative x will still have uh, the, the same graph uh, as the original f of x. And by the way, f of negative x, as you can remember, is a reflection across the y-axis. So it, it, it has a horizontal. Okay, it has horizontal dilation or x dilation. So it's an x dilation and the reflection across the y-axis is still equal to the graph of f of x. So that's an even function. What about add functions? Now we are given another function here which is f of x is equal to negative x cubed plus 6 of x. And we notice, as we did in the previous example, we could notice that our exponents here have add functions or add exponents. The, the exponents are odd numbers, rather. Okay, so this f of x, the first property that you can see is that all the x's here are raised to an odd, odd number. We have 3 on the first x, and we have 1 on the second x. So therefore, we could have a conclusion that for add functions to be determined, we first have to look at the exponents. If we find that all of the exponents of our excess, of our given variables, are on, uh, what do you call this, on odd numbers, then it would definitely be, uh, s somehow become an odd function. But we are not sure entirely about this. So, taking a look at, at this function here, so let's erase all, all those annotations in here. So taking a look at the original function, which is negative x cubed, plus 6x, we could see that all the x's that we see in, in here are raised to a, a, an odd exponent, 3 and 1. So in general, f of x will be an odd function if, if we substitute negative x for x and the negative number raised to an odd power will it give us a somewhat different sign from the original function. So, to explain that in detail, we could see our original f of x here. So, our f of x is uh, somewhat changed by replacing our x number or x letters here with negative x. So, when we input negative x for all the x's on, on, on this original function, 
So I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this and this, wherein we replace our original x values with negative x values. So look at the sign. The sign changes, right? We have a sign change here because a negative multiplied by a negative would be positive. So look at the corresponding result below. And for this one, we have positive and negative. So the original sign, which is positive here, becomes negative. So that is one property of an add function. And that's how to determine whether a given function is an add function. And uh, this would mean that we have to look at the sign changes. So therefore, in general, When we have our f of negative x, and that's equal to negative f of x, then that is what we call an add function. Okay, that's an add function. So taking, the, uh, taking into account the original, we have f of x there. We change it with f of negative x. We will have x cubed minus 6x and let's take a look at f of or negative f of x this will give you the negative of all of the terms in, in the given original function so we will have negative of negative x cubed plus 6x and that gives us uh, signs and values by applying the substitution our distribution property, rather, we will have x cubed minus 6x. This is our negative f of x. Or take a look at our negative f of x and compare it to our f of negative x. So I'm talking about these two functions here. Look closely at how different or how similar they are. They are exactly the same. Therefore, we have proven, we have proven this conclusion. So that when we do this, this uh, transformations to all our given functions, and when we do see that when changing the x variables with negative x, and comparing it to when changing all the given functions by multiplying with it with the negative, then we will have the same results. We would have an add function. So what about an add function? What does it take to be an add function? What are the properties of an add function? Is it the same as the even function that, that you had a while ago? or? Does it have somewhat, you know, a graphical property? So we take a look at our add function defined uh, uh, from the previous slide. We have already proven that this is an add function. So this is already odd. We have already proven that. And uh, the graph that you see here below is actually its graph. The graph of f of x is equal to negative x cubed plus 6x. Now what can we see about this graph? This graph is a curve and it seems to be rotating. As you can see, it, it starts from here and it seems to be rotating or having the properties of a vi vibration, uh, vibratory motion or vibration. So this means that our symmetry here, compared to our even function, wherein our symmetry lies on the y-axis. Now the symmetry of our add function will be across the origin. It's not on the x-axis, it's not on the y-axis, but it's across the origin. And where is our origin? It's from the point zero, 00. So that point is here. 
So that is where the symmetry of an add function is. Now, we, you try to flip this. Let's, let's flip this on a 180 scale. So let's try to flip it like that. Okay. We are flipping it into this motion. So as you can see, oops, it's moving. As you can see, it rotates on the origin. Okay, so wherever you, you want to put it, wherever angle you want to rotate it, it's still symmetrical with respect to the origin. So it's still symmetrical with respect to our point zero, zero. Let's try to bring it back. So I have now the original graph of this add function. So aside from the symmetry is across the origin, now we take a look at the other property of, of, uh, of this add function. So we discuss about the symmetry. The symmetry is across the origin, which is on the red dot that you could see. And we could still define another property of this add function. And it is about reflection. So if our even function being reflected across the y-axis will give you the same image or the same graph. Okay, so if, the, if for even functions, the reflection is across the x, uh, the y-axis rather, which will give you the same as the pre-image or the original function. Now for add functions, the reflection across the y-axis gives the same image as the reflection across, now across the x-axis. So this is uh, the reflection for add functions across y and x. So across y, it gives the same image as reflection. Same image as reflecting, reflecting our original function to the uh, x, towards the x-axis. So reflecting the, uh, as reflecting across the x. Okay, so this concludes our add and even functions for the lesson transformations, reflections, and add or even functions. Thank you for watching.